Perhaps the most useful tool in PowerShell is actually using the help feature. In this example, let's say you, you know what you want to do. You want to view the system event log, but you want to view it using PowerShell. You're not that familiar with PowerShell, so you have no idea what the syntax is, but you know you want to look at the system event log. Get help. This commandlet has many ways you can actually use it. Now, let's say I'm thinking about the system log. Let's say I assume the word event is going to be in the uh, commandlet itself. I can type get dash help wildcard this uh, star or asterisk if you want to call it that. I just call it a star. Star event star. This is going to run through help and it's going to give you a list of every command that has the word event with anything before or after. Well, let's say you move on from that. Get help star event log star. It works the same way. Event log with anything before or after. Now, by the time you run this, you would get this narrowed down and you would know that get dash event log is your actual command. But let's say you want to know the syntax for it now that you know the command. You can run get help, the actual commandlet, and this is going to give you very basic information. If you want a little more detailed information, you can run get help, get event log dash detailed as a parameter. They also give you examples of syntax you can do with dash examples. Now, I don't actually ever use these two. If you run get help, get event log dash full, this shows you everything. So it incorporates the output from detailed examples. That's everything you could possibly want to know would be if you run this with uh, uh, dash full. Now, you can also connect to the web by using get help, get event log online, and it actually pulls up your browser to the PowerShell help page for that specific uh, commandlet that you typed in. Extremely useful. Well, let's take a look at these in PowerShell itself. So I'm just gonna go to start, and I'm just gonna type PowerShell. So my PowerShell console is open. Now, we're gonna run some of those commands that we just listed. So I'm gonna run get help, We'll do the events. So we'll do star event star. A lot of things are in that list. But you'll see they all have event somewhere in the name. But if we scroll through the list, you know, a lot of things show up. Well, I noticed a few of these say event log. You'll see new event log, get event log, clear. So let's say we want to narrow it down through the event log. Get help. Star event log star. We have what, about 10 results. Well, we know it's verb noun. Each one of these ends with event logs. I want to view a log, the system log. So write, clear, limit, none of those sound right. Well, get sounds right. Show sounds like it could be the correct thing as well. But about event logs, remove, new, all of those sound wrong. So just looking at this, I'm not sure if get or show event log is the correct command. Well, what we can do. Now I'm just going to hit the upper arrow to recycle that. And I'm just going to type get dash help, get event log. No stars this time, so no, no wild cards. But if we run that, gives us, so this is where we ran it, gives us the name, a brief synopsis, gets the events in an event log or a list of the event logs on the local computer, gives us a list of the parameters we can use, and just a slightly more detailed uh, description. So gets events, event logs from local remote computers. If we do our other, which was this uh, show event log. So I'm going to hit the up arrow. And I'm just going to backspace over get. And we'll just use get help 
show dash event log. If we look at the synopsis of that, displays the event logs of the local or a remote computer. That displays the logs. I don't want to see the logs. I want to see the events. So get sounds like the one that we actually want. Notice under the remarks here, it gives us syntax. So if you want to see examples, uh, more information, uh, technical information online, gives us the dash examples, detail, fuller online. Well, I'm going to the upper to go back to history a bit. But I had this get dash help, get dash event log. I'm just going to put a dash full behind it. So get help, get event log dash full. A lot of information gives me the other commands associated with the uh, get event log command we just ran. But if we actually go back to the top, that's a lot of stuff there. But what's neat about this and why we like it. So that's why we ran our command. I get the name, synopsis, I get the syntax. Now, I personally hate this view because it does not show you what it would look like if you typed it out. It just says, oh, there's a dash log name. There's a dash entry type. So that still leaves a bit to be desired. That we get the description, just a little more detailed description about what the event log actually does. But then what's great about this for every parameter we saw on the list, it actually gives you detailed information about every parameter. So like the after, uh, before, computer name. Now some of these, like computer names, pretty straightforward. Just pulls the event log from a remote computer. So it gives you that for every parameter so you can make sure you're using the correct parameters. But if we keep scrolling, it also gives you the examples. So if I wanted to view these in a list, get event log dash list, just changes the way the output uh, is uh, displayed on the screen. Uh, this is what example two, get event log dash log name system dash newest five. So that's only going to give me the five newest events in my system log. Uh, you could have said 50 if that's what you wanted, or 100, whatever number you want. But this will give you, now it varies by command, but this has what? Example 8, well, 9. Well, this has a lot of examples. Now, some of these may only have two or three examples. I've seen some with, I don't think I've seen more than 15, not that I remember. But they'll give you that as well. So that is extremely useful. We also have this online option with whatever your command is. So get help, get event log dash online, and it actually pulls up the browser. So in the browser, it carried me to the get event log on the Microsoft Docs site. Now, much of what you see here would be the same information uh, that you would actually get when you write the, when you type the dash full. But some people just prefer this view. Pretty user-friendly overall. Like examples and all those things tend to be exactly the same here on the web as they are if you did this with the dash full parameter. The other PowerShell tool we have is the PowerShell ISE. Now, if you're in PowerShell like this, you could simply type ISE and it would open it up for you. But I'm actually going to go to start and I have pinned in my start menu or you just search PowerShell and you'll see PowerShell ISE in the list. So this is my PowerShell ISE console. What's nifty about this console, everything really. Now, the way this is laid out, you have a scripts pane at the top here. You can collapse and expand this if you want to show that. The bottom, you have your console window. Then over on the right, we have this commands. Now, some neat things I can do here. One neat thing here, when I start typing, I'm going to type get dash. When I start typing, this IntelliSense kicks in. So it says, I type get dash event. It says this is everything you could possibly type associated with that. I'm going to type L. There's only one command that is get dash event L. 
it's event log. So I'm going to hit tab and it's going to complete that for me. When I space, I'm just going to type dash. That IntelliSense again says this is every possible parameter that you could actually use in this list. Now I want log name. So I'm going to just double click that or just hit tab. When I space, it knows that parameter's log name. So this is a list of the logs I can choose from. Well, I'm going to choose application this time. Well, if we just hit enter, that just works all the events in my application log. Pretty user-friendly, very user-friendly actually. So that's the console portion. It's basically like being in the PowerShell console itself. If you go up top to the scripts pane, it kind of works the same. I could run my commands, gives me the syntax there. But what's neat about this is you can have entire scripts that you either copy here, upload here, or if you're going to type an entire script out, you could simply type it all here in the scripts pane. Now, scripting, that's beyond anything we actually do in this course itself, but just a useful pane if you plan to do any type of PowerShell scripting. Over here, we have this commands. What's neat about this? If I click on the modules here, this is every module that's loaded on my system. Now the modules you see will depend on what you have installed on your computer. But if we go down the list, we'll find something interesting. Well, there's a module here for a VPN client. When I click on the module, as we talked about before, a module is made up of related commandlets. They're just contained within the module. This VPN client module has all these commandlets within it. So anything related to your VPN client, these are only options. As we said before, they're all verb dash noun. So let's say I want to create a VPN, a virtual private network a client, so my user can connect from their home computer back to the office. Now, if you're in the interface, um, you can click through a wizard and that's pretty easy to do in the interface, but you've been asked to do this through PowerShell. Your problem, you have no idea what the syntax is in PowerShell. So what we can do, you could go use get dash help, you know, star VP and star and ultimately you'd figure it out. But also useful here, I can look at all these options. Now we know it's a verb dash noun. I want to create a new VPN client. That means set, set would just modify something. That's off the table. So we know it's not gonna be a set option. We don't wanna remove anything. I wanna create a new VPN client. The only new options are new VPN server address. Well, that's not what I want. New EAP or EAP configuration. Uh, that's for authentication, that's not what I want. Well, we know it's not gonna be get because we wanna create something. So the only other verb related to what we want would be add. Looking at these, uh, add VPN connection is the only one that makes sense. Now you could run get dash help, add dash VPN connection, and it would give you a, a description of exactly what it's gonna do so you can make sure it's the right uh, commandlet. But what is very useful here, I'm gonna click add VPN connection. It has this show details. When I click show details, it actually gives me a form to fill out. So I don't have to know anything about the syntax. I'm gonna just fill this out. I'm gonna say the name of this is gonna be rts-vpn. It wants the address of the VPN server. I'm just gonna make up a number, 20.1.1.1. Now, we don't care about the VPN client. We don't care about the settings. We are just focused on the PowerShell uh, portion of this. But you could do this with really any command. For authentication, I'm going to say mschat v2. Encryption, I'm going to say we require encryption for this connection. That's other things that you can fill out if you wanted to, but I don't want to fill any of those out. What I'm going to do is actually click insert. This is the entire line of PowerShell syntax. Add dash VPN connection, dash name, dash server address, dash authentication method, dash encryption. Now, what I'm gonna do so we can verify this actually works. On my system, I'm gonna go to control panel here. 
And I'm going to pull up my network and sharing center. And I'm going to go to this change adapter settings. So notice right now, there are only three things on the list. Uh, Ethernet, which is unplugged. I have this uh, V Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Well, if I go back to the PowerShell ISE, now that we have this line here, I'm just going to hit enter and it's going to execute. That executed, this drop to the next line. If I go back to control panel, this is the VPN that was just created through PowerShell, that RTS dash VPN. Now I don't want that, so I'm actually going to delete it. I could delete it through PowerShell as well. But with this, that form, and they just call this a form, we fill this in, clicked insert, it built the line of PowerShell syntax. You could also click run and it would just automatically execute it without putting it here, then having you hit enter. And if you wanted to copy this to create a script, you could also just click copy. If I copy this, now I'm gonna pull up notepad. I'd open on my other monitor here, but this is my notepad. Now that I copied that, I'm gonna paste it in notepad. So that's the syntax here. I'm just gonna to go to file and save as, and I'm just gonna put it in my documents. I'm just gonna name it VPN. Now I'm gonna leave this as a text file. So you'll see it as this .txt extension. So that's just a text file. I'm gonna to go to file, save as a second time and this time I'm going to name it VPN. I'm going to name it VPN one dot P S one. All PowerShell scripts in with this dot P S one. So all I'm going to do is wrap this in quotes. You name it, whatever you want, put a dot P S one as the extension and wrap it in quotes. When you do that, what it does is overrides this, TX, uh, this TXT extension. So now this will actually be a PowerShell script. So I'm gonna click save. And well, we can close Notepad now. If I go to my documents here, slide that from my other screen, you'll see here it has the VPN, that is the text file, then it has the other one that is the Windows PowerShell script. You can see the icon is different, and here it says PowerShell. Well, a neat thing I can do, I'm going to pull this down. And actually here, I'm going to just delete that syntax we typed in there. But a neat thing I can do, I could simply take this text file, and I can just drag it here, and it automatically populates. Or you could go to File and Open, if I look in my documents, now notice I see the PowerShell script right now because it's looking for a PowerShell file. But if I change that to all files here, you'll see that VPN shows up. So I could have clicked on it here as well. So either click on it this way or just drop and drag it. Now that's just a text file. So your PowerShell script could be as a TXT file and you could bring it here and you could edit it. You could even execute it. If I wanted to run this, I could simply click this icon here to run selection and it executes that. Now what that just did was recreate our VPN client. If I wanted to browse for the PowerShell script, same thing. Uh, just go to file and open. I'm gonna go back to my documents and you'll see there's the PowerShell script the VPN one, I'm just gonna click that and you'll see it opened here. So what's neat about this commands pane, you can actually use this to fill in syntax in the form and it automatically creates the command for you which you can directly run or save as a script. Pretty useful, but that's our basic overview of PowerShell, the console and ISE.